Hey guys, welcome back to another Rust Base Tour. My name is Benjamin, and I'm here with my twin brother, Jeremy. We are autistic twins who like to build cool Rust bases, and we're going to show you Frosthaven today, a base that Jeremy was inspired to, to build from a game called Frostpunk, which is like a, it's kind of like a Bioshock mixed with lots of snow and ice. But before I show you the base, we want to give a shout out to Beldor, the sweetest kitty who recently passed away. He was Jeremy and his wife's kitty, and he just passed away, and we all miss him very, very much. He was the goodest of all the good boys. Alright, so Beldor, this base tour is for you. So, let's get to it. This is Frosthaven. It's a outpost out in the wilderness, and it's where a team of survivors come to provide power to the wasteland around them. This, what you see now is basically a, it's kind of like a, uh, a lodge that they stay in. And this is the, the respite they get from their hard work every day. Yes, this base is heavily influenced by Bioshock, by uh, Frostpunk, has lots of Art Deco themes to it. Jeremy had a really great idea in mixing the snow and the ice together with kind of like a cyberpunk, uh, Victorian Art Deco Bioshock theme. It turned out really, really cool. And this base wouldn't be possible without all of the amazing plugins and support from the Art of Rust server that we're playing on. If you guys haven't played on it before, highly, highly recommended. It is absolutely awesome. I will say that even though there's a lot of mods and plugins on the server, most of this base is actually built using vanilla mechanics and it would, would be totally doable on vanilla. the barracks. This is where the workers come and sleep and watch racing. And go to the bathroom with uh, just a little bit of pre- wait, wait, Jeremy, go over there. Can, can, can I, can I make eye contact with you if you're over? Yeah. Okay. You could actually see. Okay. So, not much privacy, and also, I don't know what the deal is with those cameras, they're possibly the, oh, they're the, <laughs> they're the, they, uh, the overseer likes to use those, he's into that kind of thing. Okay, okay, hey, hey, you know what, to each his own. This is the overseer's office. The overseer makes sure that the plant is operating at capacity. Safety is his number one priority and visibility into all of the actions of the workers. <laughs> Here we have hydroponics where the food and sustenance for Frosthaven is grown Benjamin why don't you show them where or what happens whenever the core reactor gets too hot ah so I'm, I'm sure you've noticed the core reactor in the back of Frosthaven you can see the the coolant tubes coming off the side of it that go down into the the uh, mechanical engineering area here. Well, sometimes the reactor overheats. And I want to show you guys, it actually, I, I think it's about to happen. Oh. Ah, yes, there it goes. Oh, oh shit. Uh, well, 
The good thing about this system is the reactor does have an automated cooling system built into it and it just kicks on in the event of, you know, things get a little hot around here sometimes despite the snowy tundra and then once it's cooled back down it turns right back on. See, we, we've thought of everything our fall saving. Nuclear meltdowns are not, not, uh, not good for business. Wait, there's no cameras back here. Huh. The overseer has work to do. This is the lounge. Take a look at this. Like, it, so what I love about this server, the Art of Rust, is the ability to to terraform the landscape to create these cool little passages. Like, none of this stuff was here. These rocks weren't here. The trees weren't here, and we were able to just create this cool little pathway that goes around to the lounge and that wouldn't be possible in vanilla you'd have to go around looking for the perfect spot and instead you get to just come in here and start building these cool places and it's, it's really just your your imagination is the limit hey benjamin i've had a few people ask what the font is that i used for the neon signs and mm -hmm. for the lounge sign here and all of that it's called andes a-n-d-e-s is the name of the the font it's from it's a art deco font yeah one one player came by and said that it looked like the font from uh the uh, batman the animated series the cartoon from the 90s he's totally right <laughs> it's totally right it, it reminds me of like that combined with the shot So I, I want to show you guys something, and it, it, it's about sight lines. So uh, I was talking to Dr. Chill on the Art of Rest. He's a, another player, super creative player. And we got into a, a really cool discussion about sight lines. And whenever you go to, like, Disney World, they they put in a lot of effort into, like, what what's the experience like as you turn a corner in Disney World? And you want it to, as you come into like a new area, you come in and you're like, whoa, what? And and Jeremy will tell you, we we messed with this for like an hour. Like we were, whenever we were designing for all saving, we, we uh, tore this, this whole entry area up over and over and over and over until, and, and then we would come back and do a run through and we would come in and be like, okay, yeah, that's it. Or... Now this roof is is too close. It needs to be over one foundation, and we just kept doing that over and over until the sight line. Whenever you come in, it's just like that's it. <laughs> that, that's that's what we're after, and uh, and it, it makes all the difference. It really makes all the difference. And you'll notice that there's only one way into Frost Haven. There's you know you can walk around the outside and it, it's surrounded. That's because we're controlling the sight line on purpose so that whenever you come in, it, it's an experience instead of just a, a homogenized glob, which is what most most rust bases look like. I'm not trying to throw shade or anything, but it, it, it's, it's the truth. Whenever you can control the sight line, it, it just creates all sorts of creative and artistic possibilities. Look at this radio tower I made One here. thing that I'd, yeah, uh, go, go ahead, like Jeremy, the, go ahead. the similarity of is... Yeah, you have, uh, if you've played Bioshock Infinite, whenever you first go into the main area of Columbia and Bioshock Infinite, they have this grand opening where you come through an, an opening and you get to see the entire city with the statue of um, the, the antagonist in the middle of the city. And, and the sight line is very similar to what we constructed here. The same with uh, Magic Kingdom at Disney World. And you see Cinderella's castle when you come through the little town square area. Exactly. This radio tower, it's, uh, first off, it took me like an hour, so if you don't think it's cool, don't say anything in the comments, because <laughs> it'll hurt my feelings. So the, uh, the, the radio tower, you, if you're wondering how to, how to make this, you, you put twig up. So just put twig up there, and then you you uh, put something up there that you can mount the pipes to, and then you you draw with the pipes of the twig, 
and you come back down with it as needed. And as long as the initial anchor point isn't on the twig, whenever you turn the twig down, there you go. And then you also use the, the same thing, the same idea to create these these handrails here, the, the guardrail that goes around. Same concept. And it, it, it gives a unique look that that you don't usually see in Rust. Benjamin, uh, RP the top layer of the the uh, the shanty town tower back here if you want to see it. Yeah, let's take a look. By the way, uh, upgraded to a, a 9800X3D CPU to increase my frame rate because of this base and so that you guys could see it in all of its glory. So, uh, I guess what I'm saying is, you're welcome. Uh, okay, that, that's entirely it, i was gonna do it anyway but that, that's an added benefit is that you guys get to see it at, at a decent frame rate wow Ooh. hey look look at this i'm gonna do leonardo dicaprio and uh and once upon a time in hollywood okay. are, are you ready yeah i'm ready that was good i mean you, you nailed it like you I, are, are you are you leonardo i think i think it's him i think it's i think he's here with us Amazing movie, by the way, if y'all haven't seen it. But I am a Tarantino fanboy, so that uh, if if you don't like Tarantino, you're, he's not going to win you any favors on that movie. But if you like him, it m must see. Some people ask, how does the how does being autistic help with with uh, Rust base building? And I don't. Yeah, that, that's kind of hard to answer. So uh, I know that. Me and my brother are both super duper sensitive to spaces and the feeling that spaces give us and the uh, geospatial orientation of spaces. And we, it, it's not just a preference, like a, a, at work, if, if my cubicle or a, a place that I'm working doesn't feel right, I can't work in it. it it's, it's not a preference, it's a requirement that the space feels right. And it, something along, so, something in that vein, the feeling that space is, gives me also bleeds over into my creativity and to Jeremy's creativity. And we're able to just have like this gut feeling of what something should look like. Like whenever we were building this, this corridor here, I knew that something wasn't right about this this sight line here, and it's because it needed that bridge there, it needed the bridge. And then once we went under here, I, I knew that again something was missing. And then Jeremy built the the two story lounge up there, and if it was three stories, it wouldn't work. If it was one story, it also wouldn't work. If the curvature didn't curve out like this, it wouldn't work. It had to be like this, and and it's like an unspoken agreement because once it was up, we were both like, "Yep, that's it," and that that thing, it's it's hard to explain, but it's just this um, the, the 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 space thing, the feeling of a space. It, it definitely it definitely spills over into the creativity aspect as well. The way the way that it appears in my head is. It was already there. We just needed to manifest it. I know. I realize that sounds very new age, but that—that's how it is. Yep. And it, it needs to feel like it was always meant to be. And if it doesn't, redo it. Yep. Yep. That's uh, that's exactly right. I love the lights that you've added around the trees to give it the the ambient light. All all the trees have like a. They're lit up in, in in some way, whether in in just the 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 way that it comes up from below and lights up the trees. Just awesome. It's it's like this one over here. The how the spotlight the the uh, yeah, it's lighting up that tree there and, and the pipes. Just awesome stuff. By the way, these coolant pipes were made the, using the, the snow. Same looks method. amazing. Yes, yes, it does. The the snow reflects the light really really well. Point out the glow at the top of the core reactor and how how great it looks at night. It's so cool. I'll do that. First, I'm going to get chewed up by this fence here. Ow, 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 ow. 
So you see the top of the core reactor, it has like that glow effect. Those are actually table lamps. <laughs> table lamps and, and searchlights, or the, the new spotlights up there. And that's the first thing I noticed whenever they came out. Amazing DLC, by the way, everyone should buy. Is that they... That, that's the first thing that I look for whenever new things come out in the Rust, is what kind of effects do they produce. And I noticed that they produce like this uh, conical light effect, and I want to see see how it would look on the top. And it gives it kind of like a, a, a Midgard reactor effect from Final Fantasy VII, or like a an, an industrial effect uh, at night whenever you see an industrial city kind of like Gotham. Look at the gradient of the radio tower as it bleeds into the darkness. Yeah. Yep, that's absolutely intentional with dedicated lighting for that. Intentionality is important with stuff like this. It, it doesn't mean that you have to have a master plan, but everything needs to have a reason for being there, whether it's uh, to look nice or to fill up empty space or to lead the eye. Uh... Bingo. Alright guys, thanks for stopping by Frosthaven. I'm really glad that we got to make this video. I'm really glad that we decided to join the Art of Rust server because it is awesome. And if you like this kind of thing, please check out my other videos because me and Jeremy make really cool bases like this across all different fashions. We we have uh, cyberpunk bases, we have post-apocalyptic junkyards, we have trailer parks. I, I think you'll really like them. We'll see you in the next one.